one, Tarnation! Uh, I meant to do that. Howdy folks, this is Apple Geek, and I am back from Everfree Northwest 2019. As you can see by this awesome t-shirt from the con here, School of Friendship theme. It was an absolute blast. Um, lots of cool voice actors and everything there. The, the student VAs are absolutely awesome. They had a blast, and it was just a really fun time. Um, but then actually, immediately following that convention, I had a work conference also in Seattle for a few days. So I was out there for an entire week and I just got back home last night, so I am actually recording this now on May 24th. It uh, I, I'd actually take my equipment with. I was going to try and watch this somewhere from one of the hotels, so it didn't take so long to get this episode out to you guys. But um, to complicate matters, I was actually kind of sick this whole past week here with uh, basically you know a head cold and whatever. So it was basically all I could do to make it through the conventions and whatnot. And uh, I didn't want to watch this and not be at my best uh, for you guys. So anyway, um, now I'm finally getting to it. And unfortunately, I did have the, uh, the episode title for episode 8 here leaked to me a few days ago. Uh, as if you've, you've already seen by the video title, it is called Frenemies. And based on that, I'm pretty sure I know what's going to be happening in this episode, at least at a high level. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going back to the villains, like Cozy Glow, T-Rex, Chrysalis, maybe Grogar, and watch them trying to figure out how to become friends or, you know, frenemies to try and beat the main six and whatever at their own game. That's what I'm assuming this is going to be. So if it's different than that, I will be pleasantly surprised, but at least I have no idea what specific things are, are going to happen. So, so there is that. And uh, I do just have to mention... Um, you know, I met the voice actors for, for Cozy Glow and, uh, and T-Rex at, at Everfree. It's namely Sonny Westbrook and Mark Atchison, and, and both of them are just awesome and fantastic people. Um, gotta say, Mark Atchison, he looks menacing. I mean, this guy looks like the type of person you'd expect to be voicing T-Rex, but the guy is absolutely awesome. He's a teddy bear, and he, he was just really cool to hang out with and, and whatnot. And uh, it's funny, when I was getting my picture taken with him, he insisted on wearing my hat because he loved my hat. So <laughs> so that was that was a fun little time there. But anyway, um, enough rambling about all of that stuff. I've got an episode to watch here. So Season 9, Episode 8, Frenemies, starting... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grogar's castle. Okay. If you can call it a castle. I don't want to tattle on my good friend Tyrion. Oh, sure you don't. You might like to know he left food out again. I'll deal food? with it when I'm done. So? <laughs> don't trust anything that nosy little Pegasus says. I don't trust anything any of you say. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> And Chrysalis hacking any pony anytime soon. If not, I don't know why I'm wasting my time here. I am a queen, you know. Eh, debatable <laughs> at this point. I'm leaving since it's impossible to accomplish the work I need to do here. I suggest the three of you come to some kind of accord. Oh, oh. I don't care how, but you must learn to work wow. together. Only then can we accomplish what you so greatly desire. The defeat of Twilight Sparkle and her friends. Okay. Well, that's pretty much exactly what I had suspected. But, um... I... <laughs> I expect many shenanigans here. Um, watching these three try to figure out how to work together... Hmm. It's gonna be interesting. But, my prediction at this point is I think they're gonna figure it out and they are gonna be a, a force to be reckoned with when, once once they figure it out. So, this is gonna be interesting. But, I'm, it's also interesting we're doing this this early in the season, too. I'm happy, though. What are you doing? Nothing says teamwork like an inspirational banner. <laughs> When Grogar sees this, 
you'll realize there's no way you could survive without me. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna have to exercise a lot to get as big as you were when you absorbed What's with the Victrola? Anywho, Roger wants us all to work together, so I've scheduled a team meeting. Team meeting? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> Someone's a real grumpy door today. If we aren't meeting, I guess I, I could just stay and offer positive. And Are you trying to get body slammed there, Cozy Glow? <laughs> just leave. See you soon. <laughs> it's been weeks, and Grogar has done nothing. Who are you talking to? to? Hold on to all of this rage. I could lash out at any moment. And how are okay. you doing this fight? How do you think I'm doing? I'm ready to exact my revenge! <laughs> Being cooped up with nothing to do is the worst! You know what you need. True. A team meeting! I uh, don't do meetings. Grogar left me in charge. No, he didn't. And even if he did, Chrysalis obeys no one. There'll be cupcakes. <laughs> That's not going to help. The, the ser seriously? Th that that worked? Enemies. Which means we need to trust each other. If we are to trust one another, perhaps inform Lord T Rex to stop trying to absorb my essence. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything of the sort. What the How dare you? essence frosting? How dare I? I Do you know to whom you are speaking? How oh! Why not? Tell your log every five minutes. Yeah, what's with the log like anyway? Left me in charge. No, he yeah. didn't. No, he didn't. Ah. Oh boy, a song. Oh. I think I know a way that we can grow. Time to try something new, something better. No more so low. Trust is the way to go. And all we need to do is work together. Oh, please. Now, Are they gonna sing? No way. I feel the need to say. I'm smarter, stronger, and I don't need you to. <laughs> stronger? Okay. I guess we'll down. This is glorious. I'm glad you got your rear and hand it to you. <laughs> it's time to Bird. Try a better way to be bad. Do we really need a better way to be bad? Yes, you do. Teamwork, please. What a fad. Combine all our strength. We'll go to any length once we have a better way to be bad. <laughs> These faces are amazing. Begin. This time we're gonna win. Oh! <laughs> thin, so watch what you say. I know you're in. I swear you'll pay. Oh. Sounds like a long shot. There's better way to be bad. United as one, we'll make this pony so sad. Oh wow. Say okay, would you just go? Twilight, all the things. Have a better way to be bad. Oh. Oh, that's Starlight in there. You want revenge on Starlight? You want that huge physique? Uh huh. Mmm. Increase our chances by working as a team. See, yep, we haven't let that Starlight thing go yet. Wow! That's a way to be bad. Ooh. Just put me in charge, make me queen, you'll be glad. No, listen to me, I'm the best of us three. Then you'll see how. How are you best? I, mm. Wait, this is my thing, a better way to be bad. You shall do as I command, I will rule this triad. Oh, this is my song. Sorry, not an <laughs> One of the best songs ever. <laughs> that was glorious. Yeah. By now you would have resolved your differences, but apparently not. Perhaps if we knew what the plan was, we would be better able to prepare. You got a point. Assuming you even have a plan. Of course I have a plan. It's been scheming for thousands of years, apparently. Of course he has. Power, and it occurs to me this is the perfect test. 
The three of you will work together to retrieve it. Against this item, those ponies won't stand a chance. I have been well. close to ruling Equestria several times. Perhaps I should be the one to lead us. I nearly drained all the magic from Equestria. That was good. I absorbed all the magic of Equestria. That I could feel yes. it flowing through my body as I grew. T-Rex, honestly, the most powerful of the three, in my opinion. Whoa! Each of you failed to defeat Twilight Sparkle and her friends. Very true. My power is greater than all of yours combined. This is but a fraction of it. Understood? Oh. Okay. Now you shall retrieve the rest of it. The bell! They're going for the bell! Yes! Yes! Thousands of moons ago, the self-righteous Gusty the Great, unable to Excellent. pass me face to face, stole my bewitching bell. Yes! Yes! yes. containing much of my own magic. The bell cannot be destroyed. So Gusty hid it in a place it has taken me millennia to discover. An enchanted cave high atop Mount Everhoof. Protected Ever. by magical winds that prevent any pony from reaching its peak. Oh. There the bell has remained until now. Scale Mount Everhoof. Bring me back my bell. The ease of this task is laughable. Yeah, it's not gonna be that easy. Well, it sounded easy. It <laughs> 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 was just dripping with sarcasm. Scale the mountain. Retrieve Grogar's bell. Together! I blew up a detailed plan with Put that to show how we can <laughs> ditch each other and It's adorable! Home. Maybe when I'm waiting for them at the top. Then they'll appreciate me. Yeah, good luck. <sighs> you three are literally gonna have to work together for this. That's a guarantee. Okay. Oh, what? Oh, no. This is a smug face. Wow. As if anything on this mountain is scarier than Wow. Me. <laughs> um, I'm not so sure about that, but uh, we'll see. Oh. <laughs> She's so adorable. Halt! Who goes there? A pony? There ain't been ponies around here, and I don't know how many moons. I feel like this is going to be Monty Python references, but we'll see. Oh, here we go. Oh, don't fret, little filly. Oh, Rusty Bucket here at your service. Rusty Bucket, okay. I'm so glad I found you. I need help getting to the top of the mountain. Uh, mm. No can do, ma'am. Why oh. not? <laughs> <laughs> it's so loud. You this territory. I'm the guardian of this here mountain. It's my job to keep ponies from heading up. Nothing at the top but dangerous snow, dangerous ice, and dangerous wind. Basically, it's dangerous. It must get lonely. Didn't have a clue. Yourself. Maybe I could be your friend? Oh, Aww. I'd love a friend. So now that we are friends, you could help me up the mountain. Nope. Hmm, uh, a real friend wouldn't ask me to do something I'm not supposed to do. Does he have... So right here in the journal... The journal, yes, yes! By Continuity! Friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Avalanche! I didn't want to be friends anyway. Aww. <laughs> Well then, Crocodile and Mount Gup. Okay. Almost there. What are you doing? He's gonna start a fight. I, I I'm confused. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Oh! 
Oh no! Shh, 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 shh. Now just calm down there, Philly. You calm down! Ponies are supposed to do what I ask them to do! It's like my thing, okay? Yeah, you're gonna get buried here. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm getting serious Looney Tunes vibes off of this. Apparently, I don't need any pony else. This is glorious. Oh. Yeah, it's still not gonna work. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so you are building a fire. Why? <laughs> Didn't make it to the top. Surprise, surprise. You didn't make it to the top either. He wasn't I even trying. He didn't try to. Exactly. What? It took about five minutes to deduce that Grogar was right. None of us could make it up alone. So rather than subject myself to the other, <laughs> I decided to let you two face the danger. Take what you learned and use it to my advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smarter than you, Attitude and Tartarus, but I'm over it! <laughs> I've had enough of you trying to manipulate me with that insincere, syrupy sweetness. At least now we mm -hmm. can see the real you. Oh. This is not the real me! I'm cute and lovable! <laughs> <laughs> no, you're Could've not. fooled me! You're annoying! Well, she is cute when she's angry, though, I gotta say. I do not snore! What it? Oh, she's so... What is that? To my gram gram in my sleep. Don't you oh! bring gram gram into <laughs> TMI. Awful. Okay, what is that thing? Like a ball slug thing? Minotaur slug? I. Ball snake? I. Uh, what? Wait, what? Let's go! Wait. <laughs> Oh! I should have seen that coming. I... Yeah. Oh, she fed off the love! Uh-huh. Mm, so much love. Clever. I haven't eaten this well in ages. So gross. Oh. Just so we're clear. I didn't save you because I like you. I did it because... Because I... Me? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I was right to wait. Now tell me everything you learned today. Leave nothing out. Hmm. Is Tyrek becoming the leader here? Can oh. Why are you doing that? Didn't you already drain it of love? Oh I man, that's save creepy. A little for the next day. Oh. You all of your meals? Of course. So when you pony nap Twilight and the others, you cocooned them. Yes, until that sow starlight glimmer freed them, corrupted my subjects, That's... and stole my hive. Wow! Oh, these have weaknesses. I used that turncoat discord, tricked him into helping me capture his so-called friends. Uh, discord was really something until friendship ruined him. Mm. You should have seen Twilight's face when her friends appeared in bubbles around me. She was all... <laughs> that looks painful. <laughs> oh no, they're She's becoming... So friends. Out all the time. When I posed as her former foal, oh, no. I thought she was going to implode. <laughs> <laughs> they're sharing knowledge, the inside... I've seen her face when I nearly erased all the magic from her uh, Inside knowledge about Twilight. Oh. Magic was a little excessive, don't you think? Yeah, I think big. Besides, it would have been worth it just to see Twilight and her friends bow down to me. Indeed, wow. It would. Who wouldn't love to see those prissy ponies realize they lost everything? I'm a pathetic pony princess. I made a detailed list of all the ways I'm a. Oh, this is so wrong. <laughs> You know, they're getting along. You two may not be the worst thing. Perhaps, as long as it results in the complete destruction of our enemies. 
I wouldn't have it any other way. Do the pathetic princess thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. <clears throat> oh. Yep, yeah, avalanche. I'm okay. So, how are they going to get past so well, they can't fly? But... Oh, an Ursa Minor. That's a callback. Nice. So he T-Rex got some brute strength. Crystal's has got yeah, that ability. What's Cozy adding to this? Ah. Okay. Well, they made it! Now what? Ooh, denied! Rogar didn't mention this. Can you absorb it and make it go away? I can only absorb magic from living beings. Ah. Like her? Oh, betrayal. don't. Not no. betrayal. Teamwork. If T Rex absorbs your energy, he might be strong enough to break through. And then? Then he gives it back. I do. Oh. <laughs> How do I know you won't take my magic and leave me? Would we do that to you? Yes, in a heartbeat. Okay, normally, yes. <laughs> I'll give you your magic back. Fine. Oh. Oh, man. So much power. Okay, do the thing. Welcome back, baby! <laughs> it's not big enough for me! But it's big enough for her! Keep it open! Or I'll be trapped forever! Okay. Be so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hold much longer! Yeah, she's gonna come back with it, I'm sure. <laughs> Splat. My magic. Give it back, T Rex. Wow, he actually did it. Wow. I I wasn't sure you were going to give it back. Neither was I. <laughs> so working together is smarter than to continue fighting. When we helped each other, it felt better somehow. Oh. I haven't felt like this since before I lost my hive. Having others who will be there for oh. is pleasing. All of these years, taking power from ponies. This this isn't going to last for long. Power to help others. Yes, it feels good. No! <laughs> <laughs> the magic of friendship is like a disease. Like what were we thinking? That spreads to those around you. I watched it infect my hive. I will not let it get me. Same. Mm. Obviously. But Grogar said we have to work together. Grogar is too powerful. Something must be done about that. Oh! Let Grogar think we're his loyal. Uh huh. Here we go. In the meantime, we'll hatch our own plan. They're gonna. Yep. Yeah, they're gonna double cross. I love a good backstabbing. Go. <laughs> we can go back to trying to destroy each other. In the meantime, what do we do with this? <laughs> you failed to read. Yep. I said they're gonna hide it. Mm-hmm. We work together as you asked. We just aren't as powerful as you. <laughs> wow. Obviously. At least you finally did as you were told and worked together. Of course. Whatever you command. Forget about that old bell. You were right. We are so much more mm. powerful when we work as a team. Oh, uh, but you're gonna hide it right there. You find it. <laughs> That's like the least creative spot. You can, yeah, whatever. Better way to be bad. Oh man. <laughs> okay. 
this is like a third of the way through the season. This is like the perfect time to start setting up the villain arc here. Or like continue building it up. This, this was perfect. This is some of the best, like this is the absolute best villain character development we've ever gotten in this series. This is amazing. All right, I got a break here before I start rambling. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be back with my thoughts on this. Okay, so this episode broke ground on a number of fronts. This is the first time we've ever had a villain team up, unless you count the brief period of time where Discord helped t rex in the season four finale, which I really don't because all t rex did was basically use him and then double cross him. There was never really a team of any sort there. Uh, also, this is the first serious character development we've ever gotten for villains in this show during the point at which they're still villains. In past events, villains like t and Chrysalis basically just show up and get defeated all within the same episodes, leaving very little time for any backstory or development of any kind. Other villains like Discord and Starlight have had a great deal of character development within the show, but not until after they decided to change their ways and embrace friendship. So we didn't really get to see much of a build up with them within their role as villains. Uh, with Tempest in the movie, we at least got some brief backstory with the flashback scenes showing how her horn got broke, but it was still fairly rushed overall. And yes, I'm aware the, uh, the books and comics added a lot more to Tempest's story, but at the moment I'm judging primarily on what was presented in the fully canon animated uh, content of the show. Cozy Glow has probably had the most buildup of, of any of the villains, at least in terms of actual screen time, but it was only hints here and there what was really going on, with her true colors not actually being fully shown until the season 8 finale and the, the utter lack of any backstory is still uh, a glaring um, thing here. So, uh, But regardless of their level of character development, uh, some of them have, none of them have ever really actually interacted much before, aside from Dis uh, Discord and T-Rex in Season 4, once again. Um, then along comes this episode, where we got to explore the character dynamics of three washed-up villains who all have similar uh, failures and grudges, and, and we got to watch as they actually start working together uh, and becoming a much more powerful threat than they ever could have been individually. Needless to say, I've been predicting this for quite some time, but it's still amazing to see it actually finally happen. <laughs> now, I'd like to take a look at uh, each one of these three uh, individually here. Um, starting from recent history, Cozy Glow is actually the most atypical villain. This has been the subject of some debate, but as far as we can tell, she really is just a young Pegasus filly, one who is cute, cuddly, and adorable beyond all reason. <laughs> In other words, she uh, very much lacks the stereotypical characteristics of a cartoon villain. Uh, and that's, that's the whole point, is she's very unassuming in that regard. Of course, she's uh, certainly not the first young female cartoon character to be in such a position, as we've seen like Baby Doll from Batman, and Darla Dimple in the movie Cats Don't Dance. Absolutely amazing movie. You should watch it if you have not. <laughs> um, but uh, in just in FIM here specifically, young antagonists such as Diamond Tiara have, in you know, like Rumble and whoever, have never really been main villains and have generally been handled by the CMCs. So this is something kind of entirely new for this particular show. As I mentioned in my reaction, it occurred to me that Cozy Glow is actually a lot like Diamond TR in that she's used to getting everyone to do her bidding, but Cozy Glow actually takes it to a, a whole other level. <laughs> it, and it's, it's pretty obvious by this point that she's pretty much rotten to the core uh, with all the rage that she was displaying here, uh, not to mention comments like, I love a good backstabbing. I mean, that's really freaky to hear that line come from such a young kid. <laughs> But it, it still just really bothers me that we know practically nothing about her. Where is she from? Where are her parents? What has happened in her relatively short life to motivate her to act like this? At this point, I'm pretty sure the writers are intentionally delaying the reveal of any significant background details for Cozy Glow in order to, uh, to drop a bombshell on us with that when the, just when the time is right. still think we're going to see that hopefully sometime this season. Uh, that said, there were some interesting details revealed about her here. In this episode, she flat out stated that getting others to do what she wants is 
her thing, which of course leads me to wonder just what all exactly is behind that statement. Obviously, she is pretty well practiced in the art of mental manipulation through her charm before she was ever uh, before she ever arrived at the school. But given her young age, I really have to wonder what has happened in her life to bring her to this point so quickly. And not even just the charm, but her desire for world domination and have everyone bow down before her seems rather broad in scope for someone so young. But as she said, she thinks big. And then there's the moment where she was fuming in front of T-Rex and uh, yelled out that this isn't the real me and that her true self is cute and lovable. With a statement like that, it seems that she's gone so far as to believe, start believing in her own delusion and she just can't see how much anger that she's got pinned up inside of her. And I'm just very curious as to what the source of that anger actually is. I believe there's still hope for her though, but uh, more on that in a little bit. Queen Chrysalis, or rather, former queen, since and she really has no king to speak of right now, <laughs> is in the unique position of having been defeated not once, not twice, but three times by the ponies of Equestria. The third time was especially humiliating, uh, humiliating because the main six in Starlight didn't even realize that they were interacting with all of her evil clones, and ultimately it was... The, those evil clones that actually double-crossed Chrysalis and messed up her entire plan, so it was kind of self-defeating at that point, but it was still more ponies. <laughs> and of course, as we all know, her second defeat uh, back in Season 6 actually uh, resulted in the complete loss of her entire hive, as, as all the rest of the changelings converted to their pure form and joined Thorax's new hive. This seems to have resulted in her losing some of her sanity, uh, resulting in her latching onto chunks of wood as if they were her changeling offspring, and even talking to them as if they were sentient beings. Unfortunately, we don't really have much backstory on Chrysalis either, so we don't really know why all the changelings got corrupted in the first place, or you know how or why. This is, of course, assuming that their current brightly colored forms are their true natural form, which I personally believe they are. Um, from what lo little we've seen in flashbacks, though, I do honestly believe that Chrysalis cared deeply for her offspring, so it stands to reason that uh, having her entire family, her, her whole hive, her family, ripped away from her must have been just devastating to her, and thus the insanity makes sense. She has nobody to care for, and nobody that really cares about her at this point, at least not in the way that she would prefer. Obviously Starlight and the rest of the ponies, and not to mention the converted changelings as well, would all gladly become her friends if she would just be willing to give up her evil ways and join them, but she's not quite there yet. And it's actually kind of interesting as well um, how much she has in common with Starlight Glimmer. You know, if you think about it, there's a lot of similarities between the changelings and the drone-like ponies that had their cutie marks removed, making them more equal. Uh, also, Starlight saw herself as a leader of the community with a noble but misguided notion that she was doing what was best for everyone. I think Chrysalis is very much the same way, where she truly did care about her fellow changelings, but couldn't see that their old lifestyle was, uh, what wasn't what was best for them. And again, I really do hope we can get some backstory for her before the show is over, because I'd really like to understand what led the changelings down this path of darkness to begin with. And it's, it's really just too bad that she's still stuck in her old ways because I honestly think she would really enjoy being part of the, the new Changeling Hive. Um, at, you know, as we've seen, they're all about things like artistic expression. And I observed in this episode that Chrysalis is actually quite creative in her use of transformations into other creatures to achieve her goals. I think she has an awful lot of creativity to share with the others if she would just give it a chance. And that brings us to Tyrek. Ah, Tyrek. Honestly, Tyrek is still my favorite overall villain in FIM. Quite frankly, I believe he's the smartest of the three, and as evidence, I submit the fact that here in this episode, he didn't even bother wasting time on an effort that was quite obviously futile, and instead waited for the others to mess up so he could learn from their mistakes before wasting any effort on, on his own. Uh, he's also honestly the most powerful just in terms of you know, sheer brute force, you know, with the, um, and with his magical abilities too. With the ability to absorb, absorb anyone's magic essence, he can fairly easily defeat uh, most any foe and use their power to become even more powerful. 
Cozy Glow has no real magic power to speak of, or you know, at least not behind beyond her inherent Pegasus traits, such as flying and the ability to walk on clouds. Her only real power lies in her charm, and once anyone sees past the cute, cuddly facade, the jig is up, and pretty much all she can do is just throw a tantrum, as we saw on full display here in this episode. Chrysalis does have a decent amount of magic power at her disposal, seeing as how she was able to cast a spell to make evil clones of the main six, but she doesn't seem to really come up with the best ideas of how to make use of that power. And as we saw in the episode The Mean Six, the, her threat level is diminished significantly without the aid of her army of changeling minions. Unlike Cozy Glow and, and Chrysalis, t rex didn't really have to rely very much on any kind of subterfuge. He just showed up and started sapping all the power out of everyone, growing stronger and stronger, to the point where nobody could stand against him in terms of raw magic power. He did, however, manage to manipulate Discord into helping him, which was uh, was really the only being that uh, could oppose the serious threat to him at that point. So he definitely has some skill with mental manipulation as well. Cozy Glow does not have a monopoly on that. And while Cozy Glow is more of the big idea person, and Chrysalis is more the creative type, t seems to have more overall street smarts, and appears to be much better at strategizing than the other two. You know, he even basically trained Cozy Glow by giving her a lot of the information that um, that she needed in order to execute her own big plan at, at Twilight School. And honestly, in my opinion, he came closer than anyone else to actually taking over Equestria, if not in actuality and just in terms of, you know, gut feeling. You know, Cozy Glow was a close second, but the problem was that at that point, it was just too obvious that the students and the Tree of Harmony were going to make a big comeback for the win right at the end there. Back in Season 4, we had no idea that the Tree was capable of any kind of crazy power-ups. And with the magic drained from literally every single being in Equestria, including Discord, it really did look like all hope was lost. Add to that the epic fight scene that we had between Twilight and Tyrek, and you've got what in my book is simply one of the best antagonists the show has ever seen. I will say though that Cozy Glow is definitely my favorite villain in terms of comedic value. <laughs> but back to Tyrek, like the others, we really just don't know very much about his background. All we ever learn is that he and his brother Scorpan came to Equestria from a distant land with the intention of stealing all the pony's magic. But then Scorpan ended up becoming friends with the ponies, and uh, effectively betrayed his own brother, leading to T-Rex's defeat and first imprisonment in Tartarus. It's also quite clear that he has no time whatsoever for cutesy pony culture, and is only really interested in obtaining power. That said, I do have to wonder how much of the bitterness that we've observed from him is from before or after his first imprisonment. Uh, you know, yes, it's true that he and Scorpan were up to no good before they even stepped foot in Equestria, but I'm inclined to think that maybe he wasn't quite so bitter back then, and that he could have been reached uh, more easily. Um, it, it was like it was more likely the sudden betrayal of his own brother and the hundreds of years he spent locked up in Tartarus that has solidified his disgust for Pony Kind and his thirst for revenge. Uh, one last thing I do just want to mention briefly on T-Rex is we learned a very interesting detail about his power in this episode. By his own admission, he can only drain magic from living beings. Since we recently learned in Season 8 that the magic artifacts present in Equestria actually contain some of the most powerful magic in the whole land, it seems that he has a significant weakness on that front that we didn't really know about before. I don't know how, but I get the feeling that that's going to be a rather important detail sometime later on this season. But we'll just see where that goes. So putting it all together, these three are actually a lot more alike than they would care to admit. <laughs> They've all turned evil for as of yet unknown reasons. They've all suffered defeats from Twilight and friends, and they're all out for revenge. Also, each one of them has a rather unique, albeit warped, view of what friendship really is. Back in Season 4, when confronting Discord, T-Rex said that friendship is but a new form of imprisonment, and claimed that Discord had, had had to abandon his true nature in order to stay in the pony's good graces, you know, like betraying who he really was. 
here in Frenemies, uh, Chrysalis said that friendship is like a disease, an infection that spreads to everyone around you. And just here recently in the Season 8 finale, Cozy Glow stated that friendship is power, as opposed to magic or whatever other definition you would put on there. You know, in all honesty, all of them are technically correct to a point, but they are also failing to see the entire picture. To address T-Rex claim, becoming friends with others means giving up some of your selfish ways and instead and instead giving of yourself to others around you. So yes, it honestly does change you. But this is actually a good thing because while it involves risk, being friends with others also comes with great reward and generally you change because you see the benefits and want to change to improve your own quality of life, not because you feel like you have to act differently just to remain in someone's good graces. Flourish I uh, proved with Discord way back in the earlier seasons. I'm, I think that was season two. <laughs> um, that that you know she proved that true friends are willing to be friendly even if the one that they're befriending isn't necessarily willing to reciprocate. So frankly, T Rex assessment of this is incorrect, and he simply can't yet comprehend that friendship is not actually like a prison because he can't see that he would ever want to stop being his current bitter self. You know he must have seen a significant change in Scorpan when he became friends with the ponies all those years ago. And from Tyrk's perspective, it probably looked like his brother turned into a completely different person, which he did not see as a good thing. And since we've never actually gotten the full story of what all happened with him and Scorpan back then, um, you know, per perhaps it's possible that the motives for his initial imprisonment on the ponies' behalf weren't actually 100% pure. Which, if that's the case, means that he has good reason to be bitter and you know and find their culture distasteful. I mean, just we don't really know at this point. But regardless, from his standpoint, the only choices that he seemed to have were to either convert <laughs> or be locked up. So it's not hard to see why he thinks that you know friendship is just another form of imprisonment. It's either be locked up physically or being locked into acting a way that you know is you don't see as being true to yourself. To address Chrysalis's claim, it's it's also easy to see her perspective on this, because when the rest of the changelings decided to embrace love and friendship, they all quite literally changed and left her and their old way of life to start a new hive. At present, she still can't see that anything was wrong with their old way of life, and instead can only see that friendship took away all the family that she had. Um, yes, in a way, friendship is sort of like a disease, you know, it, it spreads, um, you know, from person to person, you know, and very much in the same way that laughter is contagious. But unlike a disease, instead of feeding off of and attacking the, the hosts that it spreads to, it gives positive energy freely to others and improves their quality of life. Much like Tyrek, Chrysalis is just too stuck in her old ways and can't yet see the cheering of one's love has far more benefits than selfishly taking it from others. As for Cozy Glow, she was right in that friendship is quite powerful, but as Twilight said, that's not the reason for making friends. The power of friendship comes when you share it with others, without any demands or strings attached, and you use it to empower others in need, not yourself. The cool thing is, when you share it freely without expecting anything in return, it often gets shared back in awesome ways that you never dreamed of. Of course, again, like Twilight said, that's not really the reason you do it, but it is one of the perks. Being friendly and supportive towards uh, towards others has uh, definitely has its own rewards because you will find yourself being uplifted simply by seeing others benefit from your own acts of kindness. Now, unfortunately, we lack enough insight into Cozy Glow's character to really understand what's behind her statement of you know friendship being power. So any guesses at this point are basically just pure speculation. Clearly she wants to have, ever, have, to have everyone bow to her will, but we don't as of yet have a clear motive for that desire. We only know that she's been using her charm to bend others to her will for apparently quite some time, and upon learning about friendship at Twilight School, she discovered that it could greatly enhance her charm tactics and thus aid in her quest for power. All that said, though, I still see within each one of these villains a chance for them to turn around. 
Near the end of this episode, upon succeed, uh, succeeding in retrieving the bell by working together, they all got a taste of victory, which is a significant change of pace from all the defeats that they faced. And they also experienced a bit of what it's like to help someone else and be helped back in return. Chrysalis felt the way that she did before she lost her hive, and likely realized that having others be there to help support you is something that she previously took for granted. Tyrik felt something that was better than the boost he got from stealing power from ponies for all those years, perhaps a feeling that he'd been searching for all along without really knowing what it was that he was looking for. And Koziglo, quite possibly for the first time ever, actually practiced the lessons that she learned at Twilight School and experienced how good it feels to help someone in need, rather than to just do it as a way to get them to do what you want. And I still think that Cozy Glow did feel a little bit bad when she got the CMCs in trouble with Twilight at the school way back in Marks for Effort. So, you know, all around there's some cracks showing on each one of these individuals. You know, and I wasn't really sure where the season is going to go. I still don't know exactly, but at this point, I honestly think that each one of these three is going to end up turning over a new leaf before the season is done. Quite possibly in response to a double cross of some kind from Krogar. On that note, let me talk about Grogar for just a little bit. <laughs> I don't believe for one second that he doesn't know absolutely everything that just happened here. For starters, right off the bat, he told T-Rex that he doesn't trust anything that any of them says. That being the case, why would he trust them when they said that they had failed to retrieve the bell? Why, why, why would he immediately believe that? Also, uh, he has that crystal ball thing, I think, that uh, allows him to observe world events. It's entirely possible that he was watching them for the whole time they were trying to work on getting the bell, which means he knows full well that they actually did retrieve it. That in turn, uh, that in turn means he also knows that they're planning on trying to double cross him. So he's probably just playing along for right now to in order to further manipulate them. You know, it's, uh, it's obvious that he's just using them as pawns for whatever his bigger plan is. And at some point he's going to, you know, dump them because it's all about him. It's not about the teamwork. You know, I, it's clear that he's been planning his revenge for, you know, literally thousands of years. So, you know, I think the other three are delusional if, they're, if they think that they're actually going to outmaneuver him in short order here. Um, furthermore, even at his current power level... Sans Bell, he's more powerful than all uh, the three of them, uh, three of the others combined, as he stated early in this episode. With that kind of power, I really have my doubts that he even needed them to retrieve the bell for him. I think it just made him do it so, well, A, so he wouldn't have to, and B, so they'd be forced to figure out how to work together, which is likely a necessary thing for whatever other tasks he has planned for them later on in his grander scheme. Um, I think what's going to ultimately happen here is these three are going to obviously try to overthrow Grogar somehow, but at first they'll fail, and then they'll finally see that their time um, working together and scheming against their common foe has actually made them true friends. Then having seen the true power of friendship, they will actually end up joining the ponies and all their allies in a final united stand against their common foe, Grogar. And somewhere along the way, I think they're... Uh, they, you know, that they're going to end up sharing their backstories with us, or well, with each other, um, allowing us to finally see what's behind all this hatred and bitterness that they've been harboring for uh, for so much time. Of course, I also want to see the ponies and students involved in in that transition as well. You know, clearly Starlight and Chrysalis have a conflict that still needs to be resolved, and um, I kind of think, based on what we've seen, that Ocellus might have a few things to say to Chrysalis as well. And, you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm still suspicious that we're going to see uh, Scorpan turn up here, too, at some point. I mean, if T-Rex has lived for this long, why wouldn't he? So, you know, and especially after he was name-dropped by Discord back in the Best Gift Ever holiday special that we got recently. Um, and uh, and I, I just think his appearance would very well likely be a catalyst for helping T-Rex to finally bring closure to the perceived betrayal that happened all those years ago and finally get on back on the same page with his brother. And uh, and and, um, and finally I'm sure that Twilight and Cozy uh, and Twilight and friends will still want to help Cozy Glow somehow, you know, finally fully understand what friendship is really all about, you know, really get the true meaning behind all the lessons that she's already been taught. 
you know, I don't think this will actually happen, but I just, I kind of got this mental image where I, I think it would be actually be pretty hilarious if somehow at the end of the season, at the end of the show, we see Chrysalis, T-Rex, and Cozy Glow all enrolled at Twilight School of Friendship, you know, ready and willing to, to learn all about it. And it'd be even funnier if Discord ended up being one of their professors. <laughs> Again, don't expect actually expect that to happen, but it would be funny. Yeah, maybe fanfic material. Anyway, that's all the insights that uh, that I've got on this episode. This is quite honestly one of the best episodes thus far this season, and just about the best villain episode that we've ever had in the entirety of of FIM. You know, and so far this season hasn't had a single miss for me personally. Just good episodes and even better episodes. And I really can't wait to see what's coming next. So, thanks for watching, everyone. And I will see you again, hopefully very soon, for the next episode. Later.